Right then, people of the EFL Kingdom fandom ship, welcome to the League of 72, the one place to be, really, when it comes to EFL content. And we're going to prove that right now. We're going to be going through three videos. It's a three-part series, and it's a gorgeous one as well. And we're going to go through every single club in the EFL, starting with League 2, and put forward their player of the season so far. We will look at this at the end of the season as well, and we'll see if it's the same person. A great experiment. And a great experiment that you might want to try as well is subscribing to the League of 72 and commenting down below who your player of the year is so far for your team and the player that's impressed you for another team. Let's begin with Barrow. Oli Banks for Barrow is the player of the season so far. Captain Fantastic. He's been absolutely brilliant for them. Really has set himself apart from the rest of the group. From his leadership as a captain, they look to him in terms of being on the ball as much as possible when they are in possession, but in terms of numbers as well. Top scorer for the club as well with seven goals, some screamers in there along the way. He's been absolutely fantastic and surely has to be the player of the season so far and will be player of the season, I would expect, at the end if they are able to stay up. Bradford City, Pordy O'Connor, the guy who's becoming somewhat of a cult figure in what's been overall quite a disappointing season for Bradford City this year. He's been excellent generally as a centre-back for the team. 3.2 tackles and interceptions this season per 90. He's also scored three goals and it was the latest goal, the goal against Salford, which is the one that's kind of made him a bit of a cult hero and could lead to him being player of the season at the end of the year. Took a big elbow into the face, some amazing pictures of the man losing a tooth for the team and then he steps up in the 85th minute to score the winner for Bradford City. For that alone, he deserves some sort of medal or trophy. <laughs> Bristol Rovers' Anthony Evans has been an absolutely brilliant signing. Now, there were a few doubters when he came in at Bristol Rovers, but he's proved them wrong with some fantastic output as well as versatility. In terms of output and direct goal involvements, you've got 11 so far from him this year, five goals and six assists. It's come up big this season as a signing. A lot of signings at Bristol Rovers, and he has been the best of the bunch. He's proven to be one of the coops of the season in terms of his all-round play. That ability to play as an attacking midfielder or out wide as well has been super, super helpful for Joey Barton. Carlisle United, Mark Howard. No, I'm not listing the members of Take That. He's the goalkeeper for, for Carlisle and he's, he's done very well, very, very well so far this season and been a big part of Carlisle's turn in form. Goalkeeper, of course, and in terms of Carlisle, although they've been struggling this season up in Cumbria, he's been able to provide seven clean sheets from 15 appearances this season. Been a key part of that turnaround, as I said, as Carlisle have looked to climb their way towards safety. Huge saves in the games against Stevenage and Scunthorpe have been massive for them. And as they fight for safety, you always need your goalkeeper to step up. And in terms of a shot stop, he's been fantastic. Colchester United, tough one this one. Alan Judge, Freddie Sears, which one do you pick? You know, when you think of overall output, you would go maybe for Freddie Sears, who's got nine goals so far this season. But then you look a little bit deeper, three of those goals being penalties. I think with Alan Judge, maybe you don't see it in terms of the final output, but in terms of being kind of clear amongst his peers within that squad, when he's at his best, he is the best member of that squad in terms of talent, creativity. He can be brilliant, certainly at this level. And you saw that in the game against Salford, convincingly won, and he was absolutely Absolutely fantastic in the game. So I'm going to go for Alan Judge. Crawley Town, Kwesi Apaya. Now, for Crawley Town, there's not too many options, but I think the goals give it to Kwesi Apaya. Eight goals so far this season, and he had a lengthy injury that kept him out up until about the 19th of October. And since then, he's done brilliantly for Crawley Town. As I said, being able to score those goals, deciding goals as well, important goal contributions that decide matches, you know, the games against Leighton Orient, the games against Colchester recently. Yes, it's mid-table and a little bit meh in terms of Crawley Town and their season, but Kwesi Apaya can be really pleased with what he's done so far this year. And it's going to be interesting to see how many can add to that tally by the end of the season. Exeter City, Timothy Dieng, really, really tough one this one. Again, Exeter, if we get this right, really there's probably three players that have been really fantastic this season. Giovanni Brown, you've got Archie Collins, and then, of course, Timothy Dieng. But I think with Timothy Dieng as that midfielder who does it all, really, he's a bit of a throwback to those old-school midfielders and capable of pretty much everything as well, you know, making tackles, winning the ball, passing the ball, scoring goals as well. A bit like his compatriot, Patrick Vieira, actually. It's that similar kind of style. Just signed a new deal that's going to keep him till 2024 which is just the reward he deserves for his performances. Forest Green Rovers Jamil Matt, he leads the division in goal contributions this season so despite Forest Green Rovers absolutely flying right now and despite there being lots of options, Nicky Cadden, Matt Stevens, 
Kane Wilson as well, all having wondrous seasons, you've got to go for Jamil Matt. He's so important to this team, not just with the goals that he scored, 16 goals so far this season, seven assists as well. It's his role in the team. It's the link up. It's his ability to sort of stretch the play at times, but also provide link up play, be that big presence in the centre of the box as well, which allows for balls to come into the box and just allow the Green Devils to be facilitated in their attacking play. Harrogate Town, George Thompson, he's having a very important season. The 29-year-old has been playing in that right wing-back role, really, really attacking in terms of his play so far. And you've seen the likes of Muldoon and Luke Armstrong benefit massively from that. He's been directly involved in eight goals so far this season. Another great season overall for the club of Harrogate Town and George Thompson in particular has stood out so far. Hartley Paul United, Nicky Featherstone deserves this award award-ish. It's not really an award yet, is it? But player of the year so far. 33-year-old has been really, really crafty in how he's played in that defensive midfield role. Really clever in terms of his defensive actions so far this season. In terms of stopping those passing lanes, reading the play and not allowing the opposition to play vertically quickly to the front men of the opposition that are playing up against him. He's never going to go past three or four players, but really, really tidy. And as I said, defensively, so, so important to Hartlepool United. Leighton Orient, I'm going to go with Harry Smith. Is he the best header of a ball in the EFL or certainly in League Two? Surely. Six foot five target man, Harry Smith, is such a throwback as are Leighton Orient, and they're really good fun to watch at times. You think of that big man, little man partnership that he has with Aaron Drinnen, it really is the sort of crouch defoe of League Two, and it's it's really come up trumps for them as well this season. Very clear way of playing under Kenny Jacket. 11 goals this season, six of which are headers. He's really impressed with that, but also as ever impressed with his hold-up play as well. Mansfield Town, Stephen McLaughlin. Watch out for Mansfield, by the way. They are absolutely flying up the league after a tricky start to the season and a bad run. They are absolutely flying at present. The Stags are tearing it up and the left-back, Stephen McLaughlin, has been huge in that. If you think of how they play, they play with that and formation and he plays as that left back so he has the responsibility of providing width getting forward as well of course but also getting himself back really really competent able to score goals create them as well he's been terrific in all aspects of the game Newport County this is an easy one isn't it Dom Telford Mr Goal Machine himself death taxes Dom Telford scoring goals. It's the few things in life that we have certainty over. The current top scorer in the division is scoring more than a goal a game at the time of recording. 20 goals in 19 games. 1.1 goals per game, making a very, very strong case for player of the year in terms of the whole league, not just Newport County so far. It's a really exciting Newport County side and Dom Telford is obviously benefiting from that as are Newport County benefiting from his brilliant finishing so far this year. Northampton Town, John Guthrie is the player of the season so far. He's been very, very reliable, a big part of that Northampton defence. So rigid, Apart from the game against Swindon where they lost 5-2, they really haven't been conceding many goals at all this season and John Guthrie is a huge part of that. Playing on that left-hand side of a back four in that partnership in the middle, he's been brilliant and scoring goals as well. Six goals so far. He had to be my choice for Northampton Town. Oldham Athletic, Carl Piergiani. This is a tough one because there aren't that many players in the Oldham Athletic squad that you could say have had good games this year. But Carl Piergiani has had a handful of them. He's also the top scorer for Oldham Athletic so far this season. Played a big part in important wins against Port Vale with two assists and then scoring a goal against Sutton as well. And has also been a big part in a lot of the draws that Oldham Athletic have been able to achieve this season. Port Vale, Tom Conlon has been the bright spark this season. He has a real quality about him in that number 10 role, the ability to create, the ability to score goals. You don't see too many number 10s out there these days, but when Port Vale do well, often it is down to him. They've got on a good trajectory overall, Port Vale, this season. They have fallen away a little bit and will be a bit disappointed with that, but they could still get themselves in the playoff places. And in terms of Conlon, he's going to be crucial in terms of giving them that opportunity. Super reliable in creating shots creating actions and just a great source of calm in terms of being on the ball. Rochdale, I'm going to go with Owen O'Connell, the captain, the important cog, crucial cog, right in the middle of that back three for Rochdale. Yes, they have conceded more goals than they would have liked and have been probably a bit disappointing overall so far this season. But he's been good for them. Playing in the middle is really important in terms of getting on the ball and playing those long balls for the team. And then defensively in League Two, 
if you're playing in the middle of a back three, you're probably going to be going up against a target man and there'll be some aerial duels for you to take part in. And his aerial duel success rate has been 75% so far this season, which is really, really strong. He's been very, very important for Rochdale this year. Salford City have had a real turnaround in terms of their results recently and it has been a team effort overall so this was difficult but in terms of that turnaround two players stand out for me Josh Morris the right winger has been really proficient in terms of creating chances for the team and then I think you've also got to talk about Jordan Turnbull in terms of the defence and tightening up that end of the pitch but overall as I say it's a team effort for Salford City who are looking pretty good these days very difficult to pick a player for Scunthorpe because it's been such a struggle for them Miles Hippolyte would have probably been in the running before his move to Stockport County. So I'm going to have to go for the centre-back Manny Onoriasi. The central defender has had it tough at times, but overall his stats are solid, which is probably as good as we can offer at this stage with the season that Scunthorpe have had. 2.4 interceptions per 90 and 1.7 successful tackles are showing some very solid defensive output despite the struggles of Scunny. Stevenage are going to go for Jake Reeves, an important creator of chances for Stevenage so far this season. They play with this 4-3-3 and generally they don't dominate the ball that much. They also don't play with a number 10. So when they do have the ball, there's players there who are playing as central midfielders who need to offer that little bit more. And in terms of creating chances for the team, Reeves has really stepped up. He's also been good defensively for the team as well. So I think he deserves a little bit of credit for those displays in what is almost an awkward formation for a struggling team. Sutton United, it's got to be Robert Milson, the James Milner of League Two, playing left back, sometimes playing centre midfield as well. Been really great in terms of his chance creation and diligent defensive output for a Sutton United side that has come into this division and really pulled up some trees. Over 140 League Two appearances so far in his career. Next season, you never know, he might be playing in League One. Swindon Town, I'm going to go for Lewis Reed at the base of that midfield. When you're going to play 3 1 4 2, it's very attacking in terms of the formation, but probably looks more attacking than it truly is because of that focus on possession. Now, Lewis Reed has been crucial in that, very industrious in terms of winning the ball back and playing those short passes to those technical players like Jack Payne and Johnny Williams, but he's still averaging 80 to 90 touches per 90. So he's on the ball all the time, popped up with a couple of assists as well. Not the biggest in stature, but shows a bit of both. Shows the defensive side of it in terms of the tenacity to win the ball and give it to those other players in the team, but also that quality on the ball itself. Tramir Rovers, I'm going to go for a strike here. No, I'm not. Of course I'm not. They've conceded 19 goals at the time of recording. Amazing. Peter Clark. Ageless. 40 years old he's played in every match for Tranmere this season they have done brilliantly we were wondering when are they going to start conceding goals leaking goals when's it going to happen it hasn't happened yet and it might not happen between now and the end of the season and if it doesn't Peter Clark he's done bits and last up, Walsall, Jack Earing, who's had a, he's having a decent season. Walsall themselves, I think some people thought they might do a little bit better this season. But 23 years old, playing in that double pivot, he's been very, very good. You can see that he's developing as a player as well. And you give him another four months, he's one of those players that you could see him playing at a higher level if it starts to click for him. So there you have it, guys. The player of the season so far in every team of League Two. Make sure you hit the subscribe button, as I said at the start of the video, so you don't miss out on the next episode of this, which is League One, of course. Then, Championship. Yeah, you probably could have guessed that. If you enjoyed this video, hit the like button, get in the comments now and tell me what you think of my picks, and I'll see you in the next video.